Hi guys, it's Alexandra here. Welcome back to my channel. I know it has been a very long time and I'm thankful for those of you who've kind of stuck around and just let me take this time for myself. I didn't make any announcement, but I really needed a break for my own mental and physical well-being this last month. Life and work has just been a lot and the stress has kind of gotten to me a bit and in October I just really needed the opportunity to focus on completing the tasks that I needed to complete and working through some of that stress and I'm sure a lot of you can relate so thank you to those of you who've been very patient in waiting for me to come back. Today I just wanted to share with you what I was able to read in October and some of the things that I did besides reading to keep myself entertained and talk to you about the books that I am currently reading. Alrighty, starting off with what I was able to read in October, I was only able to read The Boyfriend Project by Farah Rashan. This is an adult romance and it follows our main character, Samaya, who is working at a very progressive tech company. And we meet her at the beginning of the story, getting ready to go out on a date with her boyfriend. And he keeps changing plans and she's not very happy with it, but she's sort of just going with the flow. When she sees these social media posts, that show this girl talking about a terrible first date that she is on. And she quickly realizes that this person is eating dinner with her boyfriend. So her boyfriend is actively cheating on her in a location that she knows right off the bat. So she decides she's going to go down to that restaurant and confront him. And when she does, another girl shows up and they all kind of band together because they all realize at the same time that they're being cheated on by this guy. And after they tell him off and people are videotaping it on their phones and they know it's going to end up on YouTube, they bond over the fact that they all fell for this nasty human being and they all become friends and they create this pact where they decide that for six months they are just going to work on themselves and their careers. They're going to kind of put dating to the side and that's all well and good and then Samaya returns to work and she meets one of the new employees Daniel and Daniel is this handsome charming witty flirty everything you want a guy to be kind of guy and she realizes oh man this is not gonna be easy I'm not supposed to want to date him but I definitely do and then we also have Daniel who's got his own secret kind of thing going on that you're not sure of exactly what it is for some time and he realizes that he shouldn't want to be with Samaya. He can't really afford the time to date her but he really really wants to. So it's kind of the story of um, are, should they end up together? Are they going to end up together? It's flirty. It's fun. It's definitely got adult content in it so if that's not your thing or that would not... Uh, maybe sit well with you, I would say don't pick it up if that's not your thing. But if you like a romance novel, if you like a more modern setting for your romance novels that also has a really good chunk of humor in it and very relatable characters, I think that this could be a book that you enjoy because I really enjoyed it. Briefly, I just wanted to talk about the other things that I've been listening to and doing in October for entertainment. So the first thing that I've been doing is listening to podcasts. Two of the podcasts that I've been listening to the most are Morbid, which is a true crime podcast. It is hosted by Elena and Ash, and they are just the most down-to-earth, real, funny, relatable people. Their podcast is very conversational. It's not kind of strict and, and structured. I mean, they're structured to it, but it's not like they're giving a presentation. It's like you're sitting in the room having coffee with them and you're all chatting about the, the latest case. I just love it. They're both equally as talented at telling the stories and really respecting the victims that they're talking about. And they both bring a very unique perspective on the cases. Ash is a hairstylist and Elena is a autopsy technician. And I just think the two of them vibe so well together on their podcast. If you like true crime, but you don't like it to be stuffy, this is definitely a podcast for you. And I've also been listening to Let's Not Meet, which is a another podcast and Andrew reads the Let's Not Meet Reddit post and he's really good and he brings on a lot of really entertaining guest artists to speak 
and normally I'm not the biggest fan of bringing on guests for some reason that's just not my thing but with him it feels very natural and the episodes are quite short so 30 minutes ish which is nice if you have a very small amount of time to listen to something you can listen to it from start to finish in in one sitting um, but big on podcasts this month I've also been working just working a lot and then working out uh, I've been using Nuo which is a gym but they also have a fitness app that you can subscribe to uh, it's really fun there's all different types of workouts um, cardio hit strength yoga all of that and I've been running an exercise club with my students on Thursday afternoon so it's been nice to have those workouts to pull from but that's kind of October what I read and what else I've been doing now on to what I am currently reading we're gonna start with the book that's been on my currently reading list since August this is Isaac Storm by Eric Larson and I am still very much a fan of Eric Larson I think he's a great author but I do have a few things that I think are causing this book to stay on my currently reading shelf, currently reading pile for so long. If you haven't heard me talk about it, this book is plugged as telling the story of the 1900 hurricane that hit Galveston, Texas, following the meteorologist Isaac, who was kind of at the forefront in that town of meteorology and, and how this hurricane affected his family. I say it's plugged that way because I'm 140 pages into this 237, nope, 200 and yeah, 73 page book, 140 out of 273 page book, and we've yet to get to the storm. I was reading this because I wanted to hear about the storm. I hate to say this because I don't mean it in a mean way because it was very devastating. There's a lot of human life lost, but I wanted to know what happened in the storm. I wanted to know. That's why I was reading this. And I, there's been so much backstory in history on meteorology and forecasting hurricanes and that kind of stuff that it's not that it's not interesting but it's dragging my friends and I do like the idea of how this story is being told where you get a piece from right before the storm and then you kind of take it back and you learn some of the history but we're not even to the storm and 140 pages in I wasn't here because I wanted to read about the history of meteorology. I wanted some of that because I knew it would be in there. But that's what a lot of this is. It's very much side tangents. It's very much history of meteorology and forecasting and people getting along and not getting along. And some of it seems to connect to the story, but not a whole lot. And I'm kind of bored. And I, I just want the storm to happen because I think once it does, I will be enjoying the story a lot more but if you are looking at this thinking that this is going to pick up with the storm and continue forward right from the beginning it doesn't again 140 pages in we have not gotten to the storm yet let's see what it says um we are probably like a couple days before the storm is actually gonna start or at least a day or two so yeah I, it's not that i dislike it entirely i'm just feeling a little stuck and it feels very sluggish and if you're not here for the meteorology history perhaps you will feel the same way that I do if you read this can you let me know if you felt the same way that I do the second book I'm reading is Atomic Love by Jenny Fields I am not too super far into this I'm about 90 pages in and I am really loving this story it follows Rosalind who was a physicist working on the Manhattan Project which was the group of people working on making a functional atomic bomb during World War II and while she was working on this project she fell in love with one of her co-workers Weaver and everything seemed great until she saw the aftermath some of the repercussions of dropping the bombs on Japan it just didn't sit well with her and it caused her to struggle with her mental health quite a bit and instead of being a good boyfriend and kind of helping her pick up the pieces and helping her understand that it's not directly her fault like she thought it was um, Weaver just kind of 
let her hang there and ended up doing some things that were very detrimental to her, her continued mental health struggle and her career. And he just was awful. And then he up and dumped her. And she is now currently living in Chicago several years after the war, trying to pick up the pieces and get back on her feet. She then gets contacted by the FBI and they want her to get in connection with Weaver again because they want her to spy on him. They think that he may be passing information to the Russians. And I know that there's going to be some romance that kind of blossoms in this story. And I'm very interested to see that dynamic along with this plot of trying to figure out is Weaver a treasonous person. Um, but I am really enjoying this. I cannot wait to figure out what happens. And then last but not least, I am reading Unwind by Neil Schusterman. This is actually something that my whole school is reading. All of the teachers are reading it with their students and advisory, all of the support staff, administration, custodians, everybody is reading this book. We all got a copy from the school. Essentially with one school, one book, we are all reading the same story at the same time. We can sit and discuss what's going on and just have a lot of deep discussions about the topics brought up in the story as well as just create a community within the school between seventh and eighth grade, between adults and students. And it's just a really great experience. I think this book is great. It's very action packed. So right out of the gate, there's a lot going on. And um, just for reference, this story, it follows a trio of teenagers who are living in a world that would like to see them gone. There is this process of unwinding, which is essentially something that a parent can sign off um, to have happen to their child between the ages of 13 and 18. And when a parent signs the unwind order, that person, that child is sent to a harvest camp where they will essentially have themselves physically like pieces of themselves divided up and given to others and it's mind-boggling um i don't quite know how the unwinding process works we're not there yet i'm 112 pages in but the characters are interesting. Their backstories are interesting. This world that they live in is just a lot, but it's, it brings up a lot of discussion. I think this book, even if you're not a reader, like if you have somebody in your life who doesn't care for books, this would be a book that they would really enjoy. Um, read it with them because this is a really great book to read with other people because there's constantly things happening where you're like, I've got to talk about that. I need to discuss this. What the heck is this? Why are they doing this? What's going on? How can this be? It's one of those kinds of books where it warrants being read with others because you really have to have somebody to talk through it all with. But I'm loving this. It's part of a distology, so there's more than one book. I fully plan on picking up the other books if this one continues to be as good as it has been so far. Alrighty guys, so that is my what I read in October, what I've been doing to entertain myself and what I'm currently reading. I hope that you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys again for being patient with me as I took the time to kind of get myself back in the game with things. I may still need some more time with that, but I'm hoping to get back on here more consistently. But I hope that you stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy, and I will talk to you all next time. Bye.